Hello, this is Thomas with Geon Technologies. And for this brief video, we're going to demo the recently updated Docker Red Hawk. First off, if you haven't been to our website, please check it out. A lot has changed for the better thanks to a new team member, Trevor. And if you've been to that site recently, you notice a couple of posts about Docker Red Hawk already. The first was a quick getting started guide, and the second is an example of how we used it to set up an environment and then run REST Python's tests. You can find the links in the description for this video. Now for this demo, I'll be showing something Aaron Sturm helped us develop. An image for easily deploying a usurp UHD device with a more recent version of UHD pre-installed. Which means, bad food, this is for you. Let's get to it then. First off, if you clone your repo, and you don't have a lot of time on your hands, you can make all underscore pulled. It'll pull everything from Docker Hub. Depending upon your internet connection, this will take a few minutes to download a couple gigabytes worth of images. If you have even less time, just use Docker Pull to cherry pick the images we're using in this video, which are geontech slash redhawk dash omni server domain usurp gpp and development. Then run make omni server domain usurp gpp and rhide. This links the helper scripts into your current working directory like you'll see me using now. So first things first, we need OmniOrb naming and event services. We run OmniServer start to get that container going. Now I'm cheating a little bit for this next line as I've already created a couple of Docker volumes for my SDR root and IDE workspace. So here I run domain start with the SDR root option set to that volume name. And since I didn't specify a name for the domain, we get the default one, which is Redhawk Dev. If I run domain again, with no arguments, it tells me what containers are running from that image and what their mounts are. And if I use show log, I can verify the output of Node Booter that the domain did connect to the Omni server we just started. All right, next up, since this is a USB attached user on its first power up, you can see it's listed as a Cypress controller on my virtual machine. I need to load the firmware and then the FPGA image this first time. And it's a rather lengthy command shown here and listed in the readme. The gist of this command is that we're going to run the image interactively and call UHD find devices along with UHD usurp probe. We volume mount the whole USB bus and set privilege. A few moments later, our B205 mini device is programmed, and you can see here on my VM's USB list, it's now clearly identifying itself, so we're ready to go. Now, like the usurp underscore UHD Redhawk device, we have several environment variables that map to the properties on that device, like shown here, the usurp type being B200. And that's it. Seriously. Let's run the IDE with our SDR root and workspace volumes connected to it. Nothing special here. We'll just connect to the domain. And you can see OmniOrb configuration is pre-populated. There's our node, myb205. Keep in mind, it has a single global receiver gain that needs to be set. So I'm configuring it here to 60 decibels. Just like we would if we weren't using Docker to do all of this, we can get to using our containerized B205. Now, somewhat arbitrarily, I'm allocating to 99.5 megahertz and a megahertz for bandwidth. Then plotting the result, we see an FM station chattering away. Now that's it for this demo, so let's recap a few details we've not discussed yet. All of these helper scripts have loads of options. They run each with the dash H or double dash help option to see what the usage list is. Also, you actually don't have to run the Omni server container, but if you choose not to, the other helper scripts will not be able to auto detect the address of the Omni server. Instead, you'll need to specify it with the command line flag or the environment variable if you're running these manually through Docker Compose. All containers launched by these helper scripts set the network to host. This means if your host ports are open, you can actually have containers join remote domains 
or have a remote Red Hawk entities join your domain. This makes it very simple to deploy just specific Docker Red Hawk container into an existing non-Docker based infrastructure or vice versa. For the IDE, rather than a workspace volume, you can specify the absolute path to a folder on the host, which might make it easier for development. And finally, we do have a from source built version that uses Ubuntu 16.04 as the base operating system image, if you're into that sort of thing. Once again, this is Thomas of Geon Technologies, and we hope you enjoyed this demo of Docker Red Hawk and the super easy setup of a USERP device deployment. Thanks for watching.